I think in communicating to the public about climate, uh, it's almost impossible to simplify things too much. Um, it's helpful to come up with analogies. Use metaphors which which have really a common basis. So, you know, I understand them, but the audience understands them. Find ways to communicate concepts which represent, which will cross that bridge to the, to the public. Well, I have had fun explaining Milankovitch cycles with me. This is the, the globe, and here's the North Pole, and don't ask where the South Pole is, and then let's, let's do some, some things there. What glaciers do is that they act as sponges, basically. So in the winter, they, they hold that snow that falls, and then they release that snow in the dry time of the year, which is typically the summer. Yeah, Usain Bolt goes and runs a 9.2 in the 100 meters, and everybody just goes, this has got to be down to performance enhancing drugs. And he goes back and runs it uh, you know, a day later and gets another 9.2 and everybody's convinced. And, and, and Andy was talking about extremes in climate and answered a question and said, you know, we couldn't get these extremes without the world having had, green, you know, the world's got its own performance enhancing drug in, in carbon dioxide in the atmosphere. It was a great line. We're kind of in a situation where the doctor told us quite a while ago that we had this condition and then we started to develop symptoms and then we started questioning the doctor. And, uh, and now we um, do a lot of asking, well, is this pain in my toe? Uh, is that my uh, cancer? Is that my Ebola that you say I have? And, and uh, these are not the right questions to be asking. Okay, the question you should be asking is, um, what's the prognosis of this disease based on what we know? The rates of biodiversity loss are gonna go down eventually because you'll lose the easy things to go, go first. It's like being burgled several times. You know, the first time you lose your, your, your computers and your iPhone or whatever, the next time, you know, it's other stuff. And, and by the time they've been there three, you know, you've had a, three rounds of extinction, you've basically got, you're only seeing the, quote, the things that nobody wants, you know, the things that are, are very hard to get rid of, hard to move. Glaciers are kind of like an insurance policy. They accumulate snow uh, during wet seasons and wet periods, and then they melt and release that during droughts and, and dry seasons but they're getting smaller, so their ability to do that becomes less and less. The way that climate models work is that they divide the world up into a series of boxes. So it's very like Lego, if you like. So you can imagine sort of building up uh, Lego, and that rep each one of those Lego blocks represents perhaps a box in which the climate model has a value for temperature, it has a value for the amount of air or water within that box, it has a value for the, how fast the air or water within that box is, is moving and how much moisture is contained within it if, you've, if it's the atmosphere. So you can imagine you've got sort of this matrix, if you like, surrounding the world of these boxes that go up in the atmosphere, down in the ocean. The eye shell works a little bit like a, a it's like if you have a cork in a bottle of champagne, you know, it's like stopping the champagne, you break the eye shelf and the champagne comes out and so the glacier has been observed to once the ice shelf you know um, collapse and it breaks up in pieces they have been observed flowing faster in the ocean. Basically a model is, is like if you would construct your world out of little Lego blocks and it's basically the size of the Lego blocks so you can buy a really expensive Lego Star Wars ship my son has those they're very big expensive takes a poor parents two days to build them and they have lots of detail or you can buy a little car for a three-year-old, which doesn't have that much detail, but it's made out of big, big blocks. There's pr probably no parts of a climate model, of a modern climate model, that still reflects what was done in the 70s. Almost everything's been rebuilt or rewritten, I think. It's like asking, uh, what's the relationship between a Formula One Grand Prix car in 2014 compared to 1970 and the answer is there probably isn't a single widget that's shared. You know one year maybe one glacier or one continent has a good year but overall globally glacier mass balance is declining and yeah I just I just don't think we for most of my students you know they weren't even alive the last time glaciers had a good year a positive balance and and so there there is no business that we would consider operational at that point uh, it would be bankrupt and in this case, you know, we have huge reserves in terms of ice, you know, huge bank reserves in terms of a company so that, you know, they it can survive, but it's not a business model that's going to work. We arrive and we say, you know, climate is changing, it will be some impact. It can be difficult. We'll have to cope with it, you know. 
as Churchill uh, was saying, you know, I promise you uh, blood and guts, you know, um, or something like that. And they arrived and they said, well, um, don't worry. Everything was going to be fine. Uh, all these scientists uh, are crazy. There is nothing occurring. Or it is natural. Everything gets back at the normal at some point. Who do you want to listen? The guy with, uh, the, with the sugar in the hand or the guy with uh, the lemon, you know? Climate scientists are almost like physicians of the planet. So if you went to the doctor and you said, well, I have some troubling symptoms, and the doctor did a, a scan of your body and found something wrong, imagine if the doctor didn't tell you. If the doctor said, well, I don't want to tell this person that they have an incipient brain tumor because they wouldn't be very happy with me. They would probably accuse me of being in pay of the big pharmaceutical companies trying to make money off their illness, so I'm not going to tell them. Of course that's ridiculous. A doctor has to tell somebody if there's something wrong. And the patient does not respond by saying, oh, well, you're in the pay of big pharmaceutical companies. They respond by saying, thank you, what can I do? Give me advice. So in the same way, we are the ones, climate scientists, who have done that scan of the planet. We have seen that the planet is running a fever. We have determined why it is running a fever. And we have looked at all the other many symptoms around the world that are resulting from this increase in temperature. 